welcome for this first edition of Primetime Watchmaking in the News of 2023. Nice to have you here and we hope you all had a very beautiful and festive holiday season. We have plenty of news to share, business and products, and just before this and since our last edition, well, here are some of the, of the published videos you might have not seen yet, such as the behind the scene of the double winner of the GPHG in the men's and women's category, for more or less the same timepiece with the smart world timer Arso Le Temps Voyageur by Hermès. And this double reward did come as a surprise. And what's funny, if I can say so, is that Hermès don't really distinguish their, their pieces between men and women. So uh, quite a nice paradox uh, to win in both categories and questions us a little bit about the G if the GPHG should really make this distinction or simply have a best watch category beyond the Aiguidor naturally. So we also continue our follow-up of Jean-Claude Beaver and his son's new project with the second episode uh, with our behind-the-scenes coverage of their development. And yes, the clock is ticking as the launch date is set for late March. We then had a fantastic dinner party here at the club with many of the new faces of independent watchmaking. And it was really interesting to have this uh, informal talk with some of the names you will most certainly hear more and more in the near future. Such talent, so many inspired guys and was really cool to share their creation with, let's say, some more established names of the industry. And talking about uh, young watchmakers and François Paul Journe, well, if this applies to you, don't hesitate to participate in the young talent competition organized by the brand. And you can uh, register for this special competition until the 1st of February. Submit uh, the piece you have been working on and you may win a sweet prize of 20,000 Swiss francs to purchase tools or help you finance your project. You will find the link below and best of luck to those uh, putting themselves up for the challenge. Coming back to some other videos, we also published our typical end of the year watch porn videos just for the pleasure of the eyes, nice and mellow. Perfect for an ugly day outside such as today. But then we wanted to officially start the year with something different with this really super cute video showing kids and mainly girls attending a watchmaking workshop here in Geneva. Really a cute one. We then uh, were very happy to share this story of Prague's incredible astronomical clock, a crazy piece of engineering and science. And I also wanted to add that this was uh, Joanna's uh, farewell present as she unfortunately doesn't work with us anymore after having spent uh, three years in the team and we will miss her and the best of luck to her for her new adventure. So yes, this kind of wraps up our latest videos and don't hesitate to, to look at them if not yet done. We'll uh, uh, put the links uh, below and once again, I mean, this show is also available as a podcast and you can uh, find it on Spotify and Apple Podcast. But now let's jump into 2023 with some uh, fresh news. But I have to come back on the fact that uh, 2022 has been a really a crazy record year for the industry. And we can say that uh, almost every brand benefited from it. OK, we don't have the full figures yet. We'll be out in the coming days. But we shouldn't be too far from reaching 25 billion Swiss francs of turnover. That's quite massive. And important to point out that it is rumored that Rolex alone represents almost 10 billion of this total, though they will never communicate uh, such numbers themselves. I mean, why should they? In terms of markets, the US has become the largest one and quite significantly so, illustrating pretty well how well the economy is doing over there. But I have to mention that uh, numbers have apparently slightly slowed down in the end of the year. And with so many worldwide economic uncertainties, uh, while I am definitely not sure that uh, 2023 will be a repeat of last year. Nonetheless, big players got bigger, demand is still high, and many brands have committed to some serious investments in terms of their capacity to balance things on the offer side. I just hope that we won't see too much of a decline hurting those who precisely uh, made these investments, meaning increasing their overall fixed uh, production cost. But it's true that uh, some of the difficulties encountered by some brands in delivering enough timepieces has been linked with recruiting issues. There are currently many job positions vacant, impacting the overall supply chain, meaning at the supplier level too. So with this high demand, well, we've seen the price of new watches increase significantly in 2022, but a good sign has already been shared by Rolex, who said that their prices should be limited, the price increase should be limited to 2.5 this year. 
Uh, and we'll see if they stick to this as well as other brands. And considering, for instance, that according to Saxo Bank, the price of gold could reach 3,000 US dollar per ounce, I mean, this year. And this will ultimately be reflected on some uh, precious metal uh, pieces. Reason why some brands are likely to continue using more affordable materials such as ceramics. And we, sh uh, we could see more of uh, such uh, timepieces in the future. But these are sheer speculations of what might be coming. And we know that some brands are already uh, are always trying to be ahead of time. And uh, like Breitling, which last year announced uh, plans to make all their materials and supply chains fully transparent and traceable to the source by 2025. And as it appeared, it was not the only big story uh, from uh, Breitling. At the end of the December, the brand, which had been bought from uh, family ownership by CVC Capital Partners a few years back, announced that uh, these last ones sold another portion of their shares to the investment fund Partner Groups Holding, a Swiss company. According to the available information, the deal would value Breitling at more than 4.2 billion Swiss francs. And considering CVC had acquired 80% of the brand for rumored 800 Swiss franc at the time, well, that's a quite a serious premium. And the result of the strong marketing and product strategy put in place by uh, George Kern and his team. So some media have already reported that the goal is to potentially sell Breitling shares on the Swiss stock exchange in 2027, but this information has no official confirmation. Okay, next business news and not exactly the same scale as I will quickly talk about the Beauvais brand that we appreciate a lot. And we recently learned that Pascal Raffi, owner of the brand, has actually fully bought back the 25% shares that were previously held by DKSH, an important Asian distributor and retail expert. So he is now solely at the helm of Beauvais and since uh, we had heard a few rumors regarding ownership of the brand, uh, well at least this uh, sets the record straight in terms of, of who has anything to say about the future of the brand and how it will develop. And it's important to add that Beauvais has been one of the first independent to internalize almost 100% of their production capabilities already many years ago. Okay, next subject, and there is good news for those who like to watch us in a relaxed atmosphere with a cup of coffee or and who knows, even a glass of wine, because uh, Ah Lang and Zone will provide the perfect setting for you to enjoy discovering their timepieces, so less uh, regular shops and more lounge-esque vibes to, their, uh, to come. With the opening of their second showroom, a path uh, intensely developed by Audemars Piguet with great success. So the first place of such kind was opened in Geneva a year ago and now it's time for Zurich to host the party and I'm pretty sure they will build on this uh, on an international level. And talking about a party, well we just got some very fresh info regarding this year's edition of Watches and Wonders. And as you already know, the salon will uh, be open from the 27th of March to the 2nd of April and the good news is that the last two days will be open to the public. So it is confirmed that 48 watch brands and manufacturers are participating in the show. However, many of the cool players of the independent scene decided to abstain this time because of the participation fees. And I already told you my thought about it in November. Nevertheless, additional great news for everyone is that uh, for the first time, the Salon will take place also in the city, the kind of Geneva Watch uh, Days uh, style. Brands have uh, prepared specific activities in their boutiques and a special evening event uh, dedicated to watchmaking will be held on, uh, in the Rue Basse on Thursday the 30th of March from 5 to 9 p.m. So those of you who wish to participate but can't obtain the official accreditation, well, get ready to buy your ticket starting on the 1st of February and the price is set at 70 Swiss francs for the whole weekend of watchmaking. Okay, now let's finally talk watches. So first in line will be Parmigiani Fleurier with its world premiere on the Tonda Cialli calendar. Cialli calendar. And since it's uh, Chinese New Year's in a couple of weeks, well, I guess it's a good uh, to check out this complete Chinese calendar. And I'm happy that they didn't simply add a bunny on the dial to mark this occasion like so many other brands. So it's not the first Chinese calendar ever made. Blancpain introduced such calendars in 2012. But Parmigiani definitely took it to the next level. The mechanism is much more complicated than the one of the Pepe calendar. It combines elements of both solar and lunar calendar, which are calculated separately and then synchronized thanks to the additional 13th month. Plus, unlike the Gregorian calendar, which names the month and numbers the year, the Chinese calendar names the lunar years and numbers the month. 
And this sounds even more crazy if you add that it, it is calculated on the basis of astronomical observation and varies each year. In other words, it's simply impossible to make a real perpetual Chinese calendar. But Parmigiani decided to try this and uh, the limit is that this calendar requires adjustment only every 12 years. And the complex mechanism consists of 353 components with a special caliber PF008 put into the 42mm steel case with platinum bezel, something which has recently become a signature of uh, Parmigiani. The watch is 12mm thick, has a power reserve of 54 hours and comes with a satin finished stainless steel bracelet. Definitely an eye-catching appearance with a great and original complication. Next timepiece is much easier to read and it still catches the eye. The vivid neon yellow big band tourbillon automatic by Hublot presented at the LVMH watch week held in Singapore would be a pretty cool uh, summer watch uh, this year. So the translucent case uh, makes it uh, very dynamic and opens a clear view on the inside part. And it is made out of Saxem, a special material developed in the field of satellite technology. And in fact, Saxem is an acronym for Sapphire, Aluminium, Oxide and Rare Earth Mineral. It is a unique blend of minerals Hublot has developed to produce uh, colorful watch cases. And uh, well, just check uh, their Vivid Green uh, Big Bang MP11 from 2000. 19. Saxem has a brilliance better than real sapphire glass and it is of course incredibly resistant and this new ba big bang is powered by the HUB6035 self-winding in-house caliber skeletonized on an entirely new level. The self-winding elements is using a micro rotor and even the bridges are made from sapphire so that the tourbillon appears to be uh, suspended in midair with the minimalist approach eliminating any visual noise in such a sports uh, timepiece. And if you want to get one of only 50 pieces to be produced, well, do remember that the heart of the beast will be working for 72 hours until the next winding. So do more watches from one brand this time. Grand Seiko started the year with limited edition timepieces, both celebrating the 25th anniversary of their in-house caliber 9S. And it is one of the best known calibers of the brand for which the company not only manufacture its own main and balance springs, but also makes uh, the alloys uh, of, the piece, of the pieces. So the two watches come in the same size of 37 millimeter as the first mechanical watches equipped with the 9S uh, caliber in 1998. According to the brand, these new pieces are influenced by the skies around Japan's Mount Iwata, uh, which sounds very poetic. So the first watch is inspired by the mountains Unkai or Sea of Clouds and has a mesmerizing dial which might look like a mother of pearl, but it is silver plated. Inside there is a caliber 9S85, which uh, vibrates at a high frequency of 36,000 uh, uh, oscillations per hour, meaning 5 Hz, and it has a power reserve of 55 hours. The face of the second, the Shuten or Midheaven, reflects uh, clear blue skies and holds the caliber 9S65 with a frequency of 28,800 beats uh, vibrations per hour and a power reserve of 72 hours. So starting from April, there will be only 1,200 pieces available of each limited edition globally for a quite a reasonable price of, let's say, around 10,000 US dollar. And now talking much lesser quantities with another watch, but only seven pieces will be made available. It is a new collaboration between Perpetuel, the, the, the Dubai-based boutique focused on independence, and the talented watchmaker Luca Soprana, and comes as a legacy and tribute to the late Derek Pratt, one of the 20th century most talented watchmaker, who interesting, interestingly enough started his career by developing a clock to be used in black boxes for aircraft. So in Switzerland, uh, Pratt has uh, had a private company uh, producing small precision parts for other watchmakers, including Urban Jorgensen and George Daniels, as well as restoring mainly prestigious historical watches and clocks. So the movement housed in the limited edition watch is based on Pratt's uh, research, but developed and uh, redesigned by one of his acolytes, Luca Soprana, who has been uh, working uh, for Patek Philippe before. In fact, uh, the back of this watch is where the beauty resides uh, with this in-house movement caliber DP07 with remontoir d'égalité to the second with a direct deadbeat seconds on the remontoir's pinion and double flying barrels inspired by the motor system construction. It is designed, constructed, fabricated and assembled in the workshop of Atelier 738 and consists of 216 uh, parts including 
including 30 joules. However, the heartbeat of the caliber is relatively low, only 18,000 oscillations per hour, and the power reserve is 36 hours. Well, I like the overall design of this uh, timepiece with, uh, for instance, the numbers uh, on the dial written in, in Eastern Arabic letters, matching the brilliance of the Salmon dial. With the, the case size of 41 mm, I'd say it's a proper dress watch, elegant and original, and nice to see the name Derek Pratt back on the game. So for this first edition of the year, we will start pretty slowly and not immediately beat our record in terms of uh, length of these prime times, but I can already tell you that it's going to be a fantastic year with so many fresh ideas, so many contents we want to produce. And as a quick reminder for those who haven't seen them yet, well, don't hesitate to check the videos I mentioned in the intro of uh, this edition of Primetime. Well, this is it for us. Thanks so much for watching. An additional and special thanks to our patrons who help us make this possible. And we have some nice surprises coming your way soon, but uh, this will be explained and revealed in the coming weeks. So the very best to all. See you real soon and a happy and beautiful Viva Watchmaking year to you. See you. <laughs>